When you think of Argentinian motorsports, a majority of people think of Juan Manuel Fangio, Formula One, and basically nothing else. For a country so rich with racing history, it's interesting that a majority of it isn't remembered by many. It isn't surprising though, because there's an obvious reason why. Most Argentinian racing is overshadowed by Fangio, and I think that's a real shame. So today, I wanted to shine a spotlight on another Argentinian racer who has unfortunately been forgotten about with time. In this episode of All IndyCar, we talk about Norberto Fontana. Welcome back to All IndyCar the motorsports history show looking at the most interesting stories in American open-wheel racing. Norberto Fontana was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina on January 20th, 1975. He was the son of Hector and Claire Fontana and the youngest of three Fontana kids. His first taste of racing would come in the summer of 1983, competing in that year's Summer Night Championship in Liuan, just outside of Buenos Aires. However, after this year, he would be left out of racing for the next six years, but then make a comeback in 1989. He had finished second in that year's Buenos Aires Youth Karting Championship. This would start off a pretty fruitful karting career for Fontana. He would race in various Argentinian karting championships, where he won three championships in 1991 alone, along with other championships in in the years before. 1992 would see him make his car racing debut, coming in the Argentinian Formula Renault series. He started 10 races this year and would finish 14th in the standings. The next year, he'd make a pretty big leap. He would start racing in Europe and immediately find success. He won six times in that year's Swiss Formula Ford series on his way to the championship. He also won races in German Formula Fords, finished third in European Formula Fords, and competed in that year's Nations Cup in Formula Opel cars, where he finished 11th. 1994 would be a game changer, as he would win that year's German F3 Rookie of the Year award, a performance that caught the attention of F1 team owner Peter Sauber, who would give Norberto his first F1 test at Circuit de Catalunya in late 1994. He would then pick up a test and reserve role for the team in 1995. While his F1 test role was going on, he was still driving his ass off. He would win the 1995 German F3 title after winning 10 of the 14 races that year. He would also take victory in that year's F3 Masters, winning against the likes of Alex Wurtz, Jan Trulli, Jan Magnussen, and Ralf Schumacher. 1996 would be a bit dull, with his campaigns in International F3000 and Formula Nippon not going too well. With that being said, you can understand my confusion when for the next year, he would race four times in F1 with Sauber. Sure, he dominated the German F3 championship in 1995, but that really isn't enough to justify a seat. It's as if Linus Lundqvist raced F1 this year after winning the 2020 Formula Regional Americas championship in dominating fashion. Comparisons aside, his time in F1 was spent at the back of the grid and was remembered for only one thing. During the 1997 European Grand Prix at Jerez, there was an all-time classic championship battle between Michael Schumacher and Jacques Villeneuve. Schumacher was, of course, driving for Ferrari, who were trying to get their first F1 Drivers' Championship since 1979. While all of this was going on, Norberto was driving in his fourth Grand Prix for Sauber, who happened to be powered by Ferrari. So with orders from Ferrari themselves, Norberto was told to be a rolling roadblock for Ferrari's championship hopes. Although Villeneuve eventually won the championship, this piece of bad sportsmanship ordered by Ferrari would be his lasting legacy in F1. He was set to race for Tyrrell the next year, but the deal fell through, and thus, the previously mentioned European Grand Prix would be his final F1 start. The end of the millennium would be pretty rough for Norberto Fontana, with him not finding much success in F3000 and Formula Nippon. At this point, he was starting to fall into motorsports obscurity, but before he was done with racing, he decided to race in kart in 2000. The team he would race for was quite fitting, as he would sign for fellow Argentinian John De La Pena's De La Pena Motorsports. The team wasn't that good as they only had a single top 5 in the team's history in kart. Norberto was in pretty poor equipment and had sponsorship from an Argentinian comedic TV show. Now that's not quite a recipe for disaster, but it does seem like the setup to an SNL sketch. Jumping to Norberto's debut in kart at the first race of the 2000 season in Homestead, it wasn't a flashy debut. He he would start 19th and finish 15th three laps down. His next start at Long Beach went frankly worse, with him qualifying 18th and being classified in 15th after crashing on lap 65. Rio would be pretty bad, as Norberto qualified 18th, but his race would only last 29 laps after he retired with mechanical issues. It was a pretty rough start to the year for Norberto Fontana, but things would get even worse at Motegi. It was there where he won't even start the race. This came about after a practice crash on Friday that led 
left him in the nearby Dokyo University Hospital overnight. Although not seriously injured, Noberto would miss the race as a precaution. The rest of the races he started that year didn't go well either. Of the five more races he started that year, he would only finish one more time, that coming at Cleveland where he had his best IndyCar finish of 11th. And that was pretty much it for Norberto racing in the limelight. From then on, he returned to racing in Argentina where he stayed up to today, where he's still racing at the age of 47. One thing that I do find fascinating about Norberto Fontana is the fact that information is regularly available about him. There's a YouTube channel and website that I've linked in the description that combs through everything there is about the guy. Everything from his racing career to his favorite foods. Now, I'm not sure if it's his website or fans website, but it's fascinating nevertheless. Now, it is in Spanish and Google's auto-translate feature isn't the greatest in the world, leaving some stuff lost in translation, but still an interesting read, whether you're a fan of his or you're just hearing about him for the first time. Although his career isn't flashy, it still deserves some recognition, and hopefully with the website I mentioned and this YouTube video, more people can remember the story of Norberto Fontana. 